Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police arrest a suspect in a local murder case. What police are saying now about what was found at the scene. Children's hospitals from coast to coast seeing a dangerous spike in sick kids. Why doctors say RSV infections are now double what we saw last year. Finish with an exclamation. Instead of fly ball to left, it sends Schwarber back onto the track at the wall. Payne has done it again. Another big night for the Houston Astros, but it was the defense that helped seal the win. We'll have highlights just ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, uh, even more humid, at least in my opinion. We're at 73 degrees right now. And a good morning to you. We've made it to Friday. It is November 4th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. I hope you've had a good week. Uh, but for now, yes, we'll deal with the humidity. Let's get the latest thinking on that potential for showers and storms. Mike Coastrace joins us on this Friday morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. As far as showers, you said you had like this brief downpour that lasted that long. Yeah, it was literally like five seconds. And and I was driving in work. It's like, is that a little bit of sprinkles on the windshield? So it's really, really few and far. Did you see anything? I didn't see anything. I'm more, <laughs> you know, hoping for it. I guess. Yeah, well, we will have a couple of showers throughout the day, but that's the situation this morning. There's going to be just a couple of little light sprinkles here and there, maybe a brief little quick shower. And uh, over there by 10 at 410, as you can see, a lot clearer this morning. It's because we do have a fairly decent breeze, so we're not really going to have to worry about uh, too much fog around here. Here's what it looks like on radar right now, and there's not much. Uh, a couple of more of these little light showers are developing as time rolls on. As you can see over here by Gonzalez toward LaGrange, moving across 10, a couple of those light little sprinkly showers. This is some clutter there around the uh, the radar site, but as we go in just a bit closer, we do have again some of these little light showers that are moving through the area. Northern Bear County up there just to the east of Bernie and sliding right up uh, 281. So it'd be a couple of uh, kind of damp spots on the roads. This is the light stuff. That's what we're going to be dealing with this morning. And then again, a few just kind of light showers throughout the day. 74 here in town. We are once again a 15, 20 degrees above normal should be in the mid 50s right now. And yeah, the humidity like Steph was talking about is definitely there. Mold is on the moderate side. So this morning, a couple of light little sprinkles out there and 71 degrees. Call it drizzle, call it some mist or just a shower. Still kind of breezy. And then the wind is going to be picking up later on this afternoon. Southwesterly wind, 15, 25 miles per hour and a bit gusty. We are going to be back up in the mid 80s today. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms as the front moves on through which is going to be dinner time early evening from west to east. We will have a couple of thunderstorms. A couple of those may become strong to severe. We still have that severe threat. The eastern, the higher threat or a couple of scattered uh, potentially severe storms is in the eastern half of our area. The greatest threat is further up to the northeast. Once again, the rain chances, the odds of rain are not that great. If something does pop, can become severe quite easily, but it's going to be very few and far between. We'll get that all sorted out. What's in store in behind that? Good chunk of the weekend is going to be really nice. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio police need your help finding a woman with a medical condition who was last seen Wednesday. The woman is 44 year old Vanjie La Vasquez. Detectives say she was last seen on Pecan Grove Boulevard near East South Cross. Police say Vasquez is 5'3 with straight brown shoulder length hair. You know where police can find her. Call 210-207-7660. A development in a murder case a little more than two weeks after San Ramon Soto was shot and killed in a parking lot. San Antonio police have arrested a suspect. 38-year-old Jose Geraldo Gonzalez is now in jail, accused of shooting Soto in the back of the head as he sat in a parking lot. It happened in the 1600 block of North Flores back on October 14th. Police say a gun with Gonzalez's fingerprints on it was found at the scene. More hospitals report being overwhelmed by the number of RSV cases in children and overnight a major development. As ABC's Rihanna and Ali explains, there's word that a new treatment is now approved overseas for the youngest of children. Children's hospitals from coast to coast are seeing a dangerous spike in sick kids. RSV infections are now double what we saw last year, with cases not expected to peak until February. We've seen about a 500% increase in positive testing in children that, that have been admitted for upper respiratory infection. Hospital pediatric beds are now above 80% capacity in at least 17 states. In Michigan, RSV cases jumped from 95 in September to more than 800 in October. And the cases, apparently more severe 
than in years past. We're giving a lot of support that often requires inhalation therapies, sometimes steroids, sometimes breathing machines like ventilators until the virus itself works its way out. Officials yesterday confirmed a six-year-old boy from Detroit died from RSV, his death one of hundreds expected this year. 500 children and 14,000 adults die from RSV-related complications each year, with infants and seniors most vulnerable. The most susceptible to complications and hospitalization and, and, and issues with it are young babies, so babies and children under the age of two. Meanwhile, overnight, doctors in Europe announcing a breakthrough in preventing RSV infections. The European Commission now approving a monoclonal antibody injection that protects newborns against the virus. We've been looking for solutions to be able to prevent RSV for close to 50 years. We don't think that this is going to stop all infection from RSV. What this is really designed to do is stop RSV from being a serious disease and really causing those severe lung infections. The treatment has not been approved in the U.S., but it could be approved by next fall. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. In a new report, the CDC has found alcohol-induced deaths jumped 26% during the pandemic. It killed more than 49,000 people in 2020. Alcoholic liver disease was the underlying cause for more than half of the alcohol-induced deaths in 2020. It was followed by mental and behavioral disorders due to the use of alcohol. The analysis did not include deaths where alcohol use may have directly contributed, but was not the only factor. The U.S. Justice Department is considering a special counsel to oversee investigations into former President Trump. It may happen if Trump officially declares his candidacy for president again because of the political implications. Once midterm elections are over, there are signs the Justice Department will make the move of indicating a former president. Possible criminal charges could emerge from the January 6th investigation and the potential mishandling of top secret documents at Mar-a-Lago. The final decision to charge Trump or his associates will ultimately fall to Attorney General Merrick Garland. NBA star Kyrie Irving has finally apologized to Jewish families and communities hours after being suspended for posting about a documentary containing anti-Semitic statements on Twitter. Taking to Instagram overnight, Irving said he initially reacted out of emotion and that he believed he was being unjustly labeled anti-Semitic. The Brooklyn Nets announced last night the star point guard had been suspended from the team for at least five games without pay. 437, 73 degrees. And coming up next, the Houston Astros are coming home to Texas with a lead in the World Series. We're going to take a look back at some of the biggest plays of last night's win in Philly. It was so fun to watch last night. I was up late, Stephanie. Uh, <laughs> traffic Authority right now. Let's see how things are looking before Stephen walks in the door. A few cars out there right now. Very light traffic. As Mike said, be on the lookout for a sprinkle or two. And that's a good reason to stay up late. At least we got a win there. Yes. <laughs> Taking a look outside with a live cam a lot clearer than yesterday, but we are starting at 73 degrees. We'll be right back. Fair ball and picked by Mancini. Did he catch it or did the ball catch him? <laughs> what a play. Fly ball right center field. McCormick on the move. He's at the track. He's at the wall. Makes the grab. Chaz McCormick. Two gone in the ninth. Some big defensive plays helped seal the deal in game five of the World Series last night. Justin Verlander overcame an early jolt to grit out a World Series win that long eluded him. Topped off by a go-ahead home run by rookie Jeremy Pena. The Astros beat the Phillies 3-2 last night to head home to Houston with a 3-2 lead. Buoyed by a late defensive gems from Trey Mancini and Chas McCormick, the Astros have moved to the brink of their second championship. Pena had three hits, including an RBI single in the first and an eighth-inning single that set up Jordan Alvarez's run-scoring ground out. He made a leaping catch at shortstop to foil the Phillies in the third, then regain the lead an inning later with his fourth postseason homer. He's the first rookie shortstop ever to go deep in the fall classic. Next game is tomorrow night. Well, we've reached the final week of the high school football regular season, believe it or not. Tonight's game of the week to want the one to watch. Brandeis versus Reagan for the District 28-6A title. KSAT 12's Andrew Seeley previews the big games and gives us a look at what to expect from the sports team tonight on the Night Beat. 
This is not just a regular game. This will be a big, big playoff atmosphere. You know, crowd's gonna be crazy, fans are gonna be crazy, and we're gonna bring the energy. Whoever wins this game wins a district championship, and we wouldn't want it any other way. These are the kind of games you, you know, dream about. It's all on the line tonight at Comalander Stadium as Brandeis takes on Reagan. The Rattlers have owned the Broncos over the last two years, outscoring Brandeis by a combined margin of 72 to 29. This time around, both teams come in with a relatively similar ideology. Very physical up front, um, very large up front. Um, very quick backs, very skilled athletes, and um, very well coached. Very physical, um, both sides of the ball, a really good kicking game, um, you know, very well coached. It'll be a heavyweight fight on Friday night at, at 7 o'clock at Comalander Stadium. Here come the Coyotes! Meanwhile, the BGC road trip is heading west, kicking off in Uvalde, where the Coyotes host Somerset. Larry Ramirez and photographer Eddie Latigo will then make a couple more stops heading to Sabinal and Hondo. And the BGC fan cam swings by Central Catholic to see the Buttons take on Houston St. Pius X. We'll have all the highlights from Week 11 on the Night Beat. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Andrew Seeley. Thank you, Andrew. When the Roadrunners travel to Birmingham this Saturday face the Blazers, they'll be looking for their first road win against UAB. The Blazers lead the all-time series four wins to two with UTSA capturing the most recent meeting last year here in San Antonio with a narrow 34-31 win to win Conference USA's West Division title. Now the runners are looking for their second straight 5-0 start in conference play. Are we desperate or are we prosperous? Man, it's been a while since we've lost, right? What does that Texas locker room, what does that feel like? What does that Houston locker room feel like? We'll experience that again Saturday if we don't play desperate. This is a really good football team that's very well coached. That's had, uh, you know, they've been snake bit uh, at the end of ball games. On the road, mind you. Not, they haven't been snake bit at home. Kickoff in Birmingham is Saturday set for 2.30 p.m. and that's a look at morning sports. Well, good luck to them. Time now 444 and 74 degrees for now. Coming up next, the man behind a fraudulent fire festival in 2017 speaking out after his prison released. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. I'm just so curious as to why you didn't just pull the plug well ahead of the festival. It's been five years since the fire festival left concert goers stranded and investors out millions, sending the man behind it, Billy McFarlane, to prison. Now he's out on supervised release and telling his story to Michael Strahan. A lot of people consider you to be the ultimate con man. What do you consider yourself to be? I was wrong. So I, I, I messed up and I was so driven by this desperate desire to prove people right. I thought the only way to prove myself to them was to succeed. And that led me down just this terrible path of bad decisions. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more of this ABC News exclusive interview. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guy looking over at Highway 281 in Hildebrand and Highway 281 at San Pedro. Things are really kind of quiet this Friday morning. Well, some folks were so worried about the weather tonight, they actually moved some high school football games to last night. Yes. So the question remains, what will happen now? There will be rain around mm -hmm. this evening. Again, the chances of rain overall I don't think are that great. But if something does pop, then they will become strong to potentially severe. High wind's going to be the, the biggest threat with that. But they will be very few and far between. And some, uh, it's funny, some computer models are very kind of uh, non-committal on all this. It's like, yeah, there's not much out there as far as looking at some computer models. I'm going to show you that in a second. First of all, you look outside and things look fairly dry in this picture, but, you know, I had a couple of sprinkles on the windshield. Mark had a brief uh, shower that lasted, you said, about 10 seconds or something like that. And that's what you're going to be running into this morning. This is what it looks like on radar. And again, there's not a heck of a lot out there. We've got a few of these uh, little light sprinkles there in Carnes County. Everything's sliding up to the north. A few around Gonzales and then over on I-10. So if you're heading out to the east, you're going to run into just a couple of those. And up here in Kamal County, just in the north of New Braunfels, right around Canyon Lake, a couple of uh, 
okay showers on the light side, enough to basically keep the dust down. Same thing heading up to 281, and it doesn't look like right now that there's, well, maybe a few of these little sprinkly showers there just inside 1604, but uh, not a lot. So you may see a couple of sprinkles around this morning. A lot of it may be actually too light to even be picked up on radar. 74 here in town. The normal average low temperature is mid 50s. So again, 15, 20 degrees above normal all across the board. Look at that 72 in comfort. Wasn't too long ago. We were down around 42 degrees in comfort, but not this morning. And here's one of the reasons we got all the clouds out there. Very high humidity, dew point temperatures, measure moisture in the atmosphere. As Steph said earlier this morning, it uh, feels like it's even more more humid. It is more humid than even yesterday with these numbers getting up there almost like late summer kind of uh, sort of humidity out there. So we are going to stay fairly steady this morning and 30% chance for a light little sprinkle here and there. Some mist, some drizzle. Fog is not really an issue just because we do have a decent breeze around here. So that's keeping the atmosphere stirred up a bit more. Then going into this afternoon, some sunshine thrown on in there. Not a lot, but some still 20% chance for a couple of showers. Then we get into the evening hours. That's when we will start to see the chance for some of these thunderstorms. So here's a computer model. And yes, it's got a couple of light uh, showers around the area this morning going in through mid to late morning hours and early afternoon. Not a lot out there. Then as you see how things clear out out to the west and here comes the front moving across here. Here. And as it moves through, notice how this is, like I said, kind of a wishy washy little broken line of some rain around here with this computer model. And then going into evening hours is when things start to, at least according to this one, fire up well off to the east of us. And that will continue to move off to the east. There is the threat for couple of stronger storms. Again, today it's just going to be a few showers, warm and humid, and some of those storms may become severe, high winds being the biggest threat with it. But again, they're going to be few and far between most of those up to the northeast, and then we'll clear out in behind that. Yes, there is the, the threat with the Storm Prediction Center for some of those to be severe, but again, further up to the north and east of us. So we will have some rain around here. It is not going to be a big wash out there. The wash out, though, I should say. 78 degrees at noon today, a couple of showers around here, and then later on this afternoon, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms will be developing. It's going to be breezy winds out of the southwest, primarily throughout the late afternoon hours, then shifting around to the uh, northwest. And again, as the front moves on through here, it's going to get breezy and behind it, stronger winds in and around any of those potentially stronger storms. Tomorrow's going to be great. Sunday starts great. Humidity comes back quickly and then it's just going to be warm and humid next week. So again, we're going to keep watching it throughout the day, but it's not going to be a huge event. Just a couple of those storms that may become strong to severe. Okay. So watch out for it though. Yeah, yeah. We'll keep, keep an eye on, on it though. Thank you, Mike. 452, 74 degrees. Up next, Daniel Radcliffe reveals more about his role as Word Al Yankovic as the show debuts today on streaming. Five to five, the Weird Al Yankovic story finally starts streaming today. Plus, Matthew McConaughey has an all right birthday today. For the latest, what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Get ready to get weird. Weird, the Al Yankovic story starts streaming today, a very loose biopic about the life of the world's most famous parody singer. Daniel Radcliffe plays Yankovic, Evan Rachel Wood plays Madonna, and they tell me they both embrace the weird. I, I've learned the lesson of the film in my own life, of the, the, the more you follow your own natural weirdness, sort of the happier you'll probably be. Evan, do you consider yourself a weirdo? 100%. People comment on it sometimes, because I think people expect me to be like a lot smoother and cooler than I actually am, and then they're a little taken aback to when they realize what a nerd I am. Weird, the Al Yankovic story is out today on the Roku channel. I work for the Army Corps of Engineers. Now I need them to clear me so I can go back. You got blown up over there and you want to go back? Also new streaming today, Causeway stars Jennifer Lawrence as an injured soldier readjusting to civilian life. That's on Apple TV Plus, along with the Selena Gomez documentary, My Mind and Me. Netflix is debuts in Nola Holmes 2, starring Millie Bobby Brown and Henry Cavill. Harry Styles stars in the complicated love story, My Policeman, on Prime Video. And in theaters, it's the family drama Armageddon Time, starring Anne Hathaway, Jeremy Strong, and Anthony Hopkins.
one. It's going to be a slow weekend at the box office, which could use a hit. With the final numbers in, last month was the worst October in 21 years, not counting 2020. And happy birthday to media mogul Sean Diddy Combs. He's 53 today. Also 53, Oscar winner Matthew McConaughey. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. Three minutes till five, 74 degrees. We're just days ahead of the midterm elections. We're going to take a look at how some of the biggest candidates and party heavyweights are making their closing arguments with control of Congress up for grabs. If you think you're paying too much for Netflix, there's a cheaper option now. We'll tell you what's included in the New Deal. And ahead on GMSA at six, if you're looking to holiday shop on a budget, we're going to have some things you need to do now to score the best Black Friday deals. Checking Transguide as Stephen Cavazos takes a look over my right shoulder here as he's in the studio on this Friday morning. We'll talk to him coming up. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And I want to use at least half of that $27 billion to return it to you with the largest property tax cut in the history of the state of Texas. Governor Greg Abbott making a last minute push for votes here in Bear County. We'll tell you what else the governor promised during his visit. Four days until Election Day. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. The closing arguments from both sides coming up. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we're starting at 74 degrees with humidity and hoping for rain. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, the 4th of November. Happy Friday. Hope you've had a good week. Thanks for joining us. Uh, excited about some showers in some areas. We hope the big storms stay away, but we could use a little more rain around here. Mike Oster H. Well, there's not going to be a lot really of either. We'll have a few showers around throughout the day. We've got a couple little light sprinkles out there as of right now. And yes, there will be some storms tonight. Most of those, though, are going to be well up to the north and east of us. Going to get that sorted out in just a second here. 75 degrees right now. We are are anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees above normal. That bottom number dew point is extremely high. We've got more of a breeze this morning, so we're not having to deal with the fog like we've had the past couple of mornings. 84 for a high temperature today. That is 10 degrees above normal and plenty of humidity. The aquifer yesterday's reading, it did drop or excuse me, go up three tenths of a foot and the allergens. We've got a moderate amount of mold. Of course, the update account is going to be coming out in uh, about a couple of hours. Now, as far as rain right now, there's not really a heck of a lot out there. As you can see, just a few little light uh, sprinkly showers. I had a couple of just specks on the windshield this morning. As you can see, a couple of them going out there in toward Bernie right across uh, I-10 heading up 281. Everything is moving pretty much just uh, straight up to the north and widening out somewhat down here to the uh, southeast around Carnes County, Gonzales. You can see some of those showers. A couple of them had crossed over I-10 over there well east of San Antonio. And that's about it right now. It is nothing really to write home about as far as the rain is concerned. Just a couple of light uh, sprinkles, call it uh, drizzle, if you will. Again, temperatures are 15, 20 degrees above their respective normals this morning. Lots of humidity out there as well. So warm and humid with that drizzle. And then throughout the day, a couple of showers and then a few thunderstorms later on this afternoon. The timing of the front is going to be dinner time into early evening hours, obviously coming in from west to east. It will touch off a couple of showers, a couple of more thunderstorms around there. Some of those could be potentially on the strong to severe side with high winds being the biggest threats. And then it's going to move on out. And again, the majority of those storms are going to be further up to the, the north and east. We'll start to clear out from west to east, and it's also going to be very windy. Breezy out ahead of the front, front windy in behind it. And then tomorrow is going to be a fantastic day. Sunday starts off nice. Humidity is going to return fairly quickly during the day on Sunday. Storm Prediction Center does have the risk for few scattered strong to potentially severe storms in the eastern half of our area. But again, the greatest threat is further up there to the northeast. We'll get it all sorted out. What to expect for your Friday night football game and going into next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authorities, Stephen Cavazos, Friday morning. morning. That's all we need to say, right? Yeah, but you know what? I canceled my barbecue plans. I was whispering to Mark over there, so <laughs> that's not fun. But uh, it's OK because we have some good roadways right now and that that's enough for us right now. So let's go ahead and get a quick look around town and see what you can expect. 410 at San Pedro there at Starcrest. Uh, maybe one or two vehicles out on the roadway right now, but thankfully nothing major is taking place for, that will cause any issues for you or early morning commute, I should say. Uh, there's 281 at Hildebrand at San Pedro just 
quiet and that's the way we like it at least as we're getting the morning started. But let's get you to the map because uh, unfortunately, although we are seeing some quiet shots there in transit guide, we do have at least one incident that just popped up here along I 10 East at Hildebrand Avenue a crash reported, but we're not seeing any uh, delays just yet in those eastbound lanes of I 10. I'll get our friends at trans guide on the phone, find out if we can get a shot of the conditions out there, but overall doesn't look like we're off to a bad start, so hopefully it will stay that way. If you are going to be driving into the Alamo City, it's pretty much the same story here. Green across the board, I 10 hitting those westbound lanes heading in from Seguin 29 minutes at this point, a little more than half an hour on 87. If you're traveling in from Lavernia northbound and right now for our friends down in Floresville, expect about a 28 minute drive time. So as we drive off into the weekend, we're off to a good start. I'll get an update on that crash along I 10 and then we're going to have some road closures to talk about as we drive off into the weekend. That'll be coming up a little bit later on. Mark stuff. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, Leon Valley police say a man's in the hospital after someone in a truck ran over his legs. Happened around 1030 last night in the area of Bandera and Loop 410 on the northwest side. Police say a driver was having a fight with a passenger in the truck. At some point, police say that passenger was either pushed out or jumped out of the truck. And that's when his legs were run over and the driver of the truck drove away from the scene. So far, police have not announced any arrests. A confrontation between San Antonio Council members leads to a new vote. Next week, San Antonio City Council will vote on whether to censure District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo. Now, according to an agenda memo, Bravo, quote, aggressively approached and berated fellow City Council member, end quote. Now, as we reported, this confrontation involved District 7 Councilwoman Ana Sandoval ahead of a budget vote in September. The two previously dated. An independent investigation found that Bravo's actions violated city administrative directives, specifically ones covering equal employment opportunity, anti-harassment, and violence in the workplace. The mayor had previously suspended Bravo from his committee assignments. Both Bravo and Sandoval's offices declined to comment for this story. Local victim of a vehicle theft is warning other Hyundai and Kia owners to be on the lookout for an online social media challenge, and challenge pushing thieves to steal cars. Ashley Santos says her car was taken for a few days, then trashed and damaged after thieves took it for a joyride. The challenge reportedly takes advantage of the vehicle's flawed ignition system that makes them easy to steal without a key. San Antonio police say they are aware of the social media challenge as well. The owner of a car repair company says vehicle owners are left with hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in damages, but that is not the only problem. The biggest thing right now in the automotive industry is that parts are not readily available. So if, if you know, you get subjected to that, you may not be able to get your car back right away because you've got to have a, a, a part that may or may not be available. He and police encourage people to park in well-lit areas in secure parking lots, but also invest in a security alarm or even a steering wheel lock. One of those locks can be purchased for less than $40. And Governor Greg Abbott makes a last-minute campaign stop in Bon Army. During the visit yesterday, the governor talked about how he hopes to fix some of the issues facing the state. That includes things like deadly fentanyl coming from across the border, immigration, and the economy. We will label fentanyl for what it is. It is fentanyl poisoning. And then the, the second thing is this. The people who are lacing it on there and then knowingly selling it to somebody else I want to increase their penalty and ensure that they will be charged with murder. I want to use at least half of that $27 billion to return it to you with the largest property tax cut in the history of the state of Texas. Our sister station KPRC in Houston did a sit-down interview with the governor ahead of the midterm election. You can watch that interview in its entirety right now on KSET.com. Election Day now just four days away. President Biden and former President Trump on the campaign trail trying to rally voters. As ABC's Elizabeth Schulze reports, polls show key Senate races are up for grabs while there are new concerns about threats against election workers. In the final sprint to Election Day, with control of Congress hanging in the balance, leaders from both parties are making their closing arguments. This Tuesday, you must vote Republican in a giant red wave. This is a choice, a choice between two vastly different visions of America. Campaigning in New Mexico and California, President Biden touting his economic record and arguing democracy is on the ballot. There's too much political violence. 
There's too much intimidation. In Iowa, former President Trump stumping for seven-term Senate Republican Chuck Grassley and teasing his own 2024 run. I will very, very, very probably do it again. The balance of power in the Senate coming like, down to what, three dead heat races, Pennsylvania, Nevada, and Georgia. Over in Georgia, the closer we get to Election Day, the tighter this race gets. Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock with 46 uh, percent, Herschel Walker with 46 as well. Across the country, growing concerns about increased threats against election officials. In Arizona, startling images of armed poll watchers in tactical gear. In Colorado, election officials received a ballot with a suspicious powdery substance. We identified it uh, through our processes, secured the ballot, and contacted law enforcement. That county clerk, a former Marine, now wears a bulletproof vest. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Time right now, 510, 74 degrees. Netflix rolls out its cheaper ad-supported tier. We're going to tell you how much it costs and what's included. Outside with live cam. Have you made weekend plans? Could they be affected by some storms? Mike Ostrange has the very latest thinking this morning as you're watching GMSA. 513 Netflix has launched its lower price subscription plan with commercials. ABC's Andrea Fujii has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Netflix has rolled out its first ad-supported plan. It's called Basic with Ads. And at $6.99 per month, it's the cheapest subscription you can choose. Netflix says viewers will get about four to five minutes of ads for each hour of content, and some titles will not be available. Shopping is about to get a lot easier for iPhone owners. PayPal and Venmo branded credit and debit cards will soon be added to the Apple Wallet app. The beefed up tap to pay feature will be available for use online and in stores anywhere Apple Pay is accepted. And finally, T-Mobile is getting into luggage with the uncarrier on. It has a wireless charging dock and a removable power bank, among other features. The bag's magenta color is meant to stand out if it's ever checked at the airport. The price tag, $325. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 514. Let's go ahead and look out there with TransGuide. I know things were moving smoothing er, smoothly earlier, but now at I-10 at West Avenue, we see flashing lights, and we'll be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos after the break. Serving in Afghanistan, I was hit by sniper fire, and I was given a 5% chance to live. It's a good thing math wasn't my best subject. Today, I visit classrooms and share my story. I tell kids that with a little help and a lot of work, that you can overcome any challenge. DAV helps veterans like Adam get the benefits they've earned. They help more than a million veterans every year. My victory is being there for the next generation. Support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. It's nothing. Sounds like something. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, unsystemic diarrhea. Pepto-Bismol coats and soothes for fast relief when you need it most. Is dad posting a farewell to his favorite college freshman? Nope. He's switching his choice cashback category to gas. The road to college can be emotional, but also rewarding. With the Bank of America customized cash rewards card, you just can't stop getting rewarded. Welcome back, 518 on your Friday morning, and we spotted some flashing lights on Transcat a little bit earlier. Yes, we did. Yep, uh, it's that crash we mentioned a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Let's go and see if we can get a shot of that crash. It's along I-10, so if you're traveling, traveling east, I should say, just be on the lookout. Let's go ahead and get that wide look if we can to pan that camera in a little bit more to give our viewers a peek at exactly what is going on over there, because unfortunately, those flashing lights have been out there for a little while. Um, not sure if anyone is seriously hurt, as always. We hope everyone's doing okay out there, but again, this is in the eastbound lanes of I-10, so just watch out. We do have first responders on the scene, and it does look like a vehicle is off, perhaps in the grass. A little hard to make out there with their hazard lights on, so again, hope, hopefully everyone's doing okay. But You see, traffic is already picking up out there. Let's get you to the map. I-10 eastbound at Hildebrand Avenue is where you can expect to see those flashing lights. Just watch out for first responders. Thankfully, as we give you a wide look now, not a lot to talk about, but as I mentioned, we do have some of those road closures, and this is something we've been talking about throughout the week. State Highway 46 in Comal County, that striping work, 
Well, guess what? It's going to wrap up tonight, so just be on the lookout 9 in the evening at 5 in the morning. If you travel through that direction, single lane closures in both directions, I should say from Old Bernie Road to Bentwood Drive. And if you want to plan your weekend commute, hey, grab those phones right now. Open your camera app and scan the QR code that is now on the screen that will take you to our KSAT traffic page has a list of all the closures that are current throughout the month of November, and you can expect to see a lot of road closures taking place in and around the Alamo City, Mike. Not something you always want to hear. I know it's progress, but yeah, yeah road progress. closure. <laughs> All right, uh, looking out uh, this morning at 10 at 410. Remember, the past couple of mornings couldn't hardly see anything from this vantage point because of the uh, fog that we have, but it's not the situation this morning. Despite the fact we still have plenty of humidity out there, we've got more of a breeze, so that's preventing a lot of the fog from forming up. We do have a few light sprinkly showers uh, pretty much right now. Cut the area in half and Again, it's not really a whole lot to uh, to take notice of, but just enough to make the roads sort of damp. So down around uh, Carnes County and then moving in toward portions of Wilson County, heading up to the north. A few of those crossing over right there east of uh, Luling. Just uh, going to run into a few little wet spots on I-10. Same thing in and around uh, Seguin and then heading up 281 into Kamau County. A few of those showers move through uh, Canyon Lake area. A couple of them around Bernie as well. We've had a few of them in and around town. A lot of this is just some, some clutter right in here. But I had a few little sprinkles on the, the windshield this morning. Mark said he had a very, very brief, decent little shower. That's what we can expect this morning. Enough to make the roads just kind of uh, on the damp side. So 30 percent chance for a few of those light showers around this morning. Temperatures aren't going to be moving too much more. They are right now just because of the cloud cover, all that humidity like the past couple of mornings. We'll see some sunshine mixed in here, leaning toward the cloudier side, though, throughout the rest of today. Still a chance for a couple of light showers here throughout the afternoon. Not a great shot at rain and then we'll top off at 84 degrees. Later on this afternoon, we start to see a couple of uh, thunderstorms around here, but this is not one of those situations that is really just cut and dry. A couple of different computer models want to show this one is a little more aggressive as far as some of the storms developing. But the thing to take away from this is the majority of those are going to be further up to the north. So right along this line, just just paralleling uh, 35 San Marcos in toward New Braunfels right after dinner time, around dinner time. A couple of those storms that are going to be developing and these will continue to work their way east and will start to clear out off to the west. Now going into the mid evening hours, yeah, we will have this line developing even into uh, eastern Bear County with a couple of those showers. Those will continue to work their way further off to the east and a couple of stronger storms may be developing then going into the mid evening hours and again continuing to work their way off to the east. Different computer model. This one is nowhere near as aggressive with the uh, storms developing just a very, very broken line and this would continue again to work its way off to the east. The majority of those showers and thunderstorms, though, are going to be further up to the northeast. Now, as far as football tonight, yes, there will be a few showers around, a couple of thunderstorms around as well. Not going to be a, a washout, though. 81 degrees at kickoff and then 76 right around halftime. And the sun does set just before 7 o'clock, about quarter till 7 later on this evening. So the forecast today, we're going to have a couple of light sprinkly showers around this morning. Just here or there, enough to make the roads damp. 78 at noon with, again, a few showers, one or two of them scattered about throughout the afternoon. Then a couple of thunderstorms will be developing as we go into the late afternoon hours in toward dinner time. 84 degrees for a high temperature and a couple of those thunderstorms around this evening and then we're going to start to clear out from west to east it is going to be breezy and behind that tomorrow looks great starting off good sunday humidity makes a quick return so again the the overall theme to this is rain chances are not that great but if something does pop one of those thunderstorms the atmosphere is fairly volatile so they can become severe but they will be uh, few and far between still watch out for it though indeed thank you mike Right now, 523, 74 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Anna Ferris talks about the estate. And Weird Al Yankovic talks about his parody biopic. Both are debuting this weekend. Whether you're looking for something new on the big or small screen this weekend, there's a lot to watch. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. We heard you weren't well. <laughs> you think the side of you two is going to cheer me up? Are you dim? Anna Ferris and Tony Collette are just two of the scheming relatives kissing up to dying matriarch Kathleen Turner in The Estate, Ferris's first film after the COVID shutdown.
it was exactly the right project for me at the right time. We laughed all day long. I'm working with these incredible actors. I would forget my lines sometimes because I would just be watching everyone's like brilliant performances. The estate opens in theaters this weekend. I pushed away my band. You're all just a bunch of normals. I'm the weird one. You gotta take care of yourself. I saw in you something special, an artist. Weird Al Yankovic says he can't understand why some fans didn't think Daniel Radcliffe was the right choice to star in Weird, the Al Yankovic story. People are always second guessing the cast and like, why didn't you pick and they'll name an, an actor that has like, you know, long curly hair. Like, you know, getting a wig is the least important thing. <laughs> <laughs> when you're casting, I mean, it's all about the energy and the and the chops. And Daniel just really embodies that character. He's got the right energy. He he, you know, he's an, a brilliant dramatic actor. He's a brilliant comedic actor. Uh, he nailed the tone, which was what we were going for. We knew he would get it. And he, you know, he absolutely killed it. The biopic parody is now playing on the Roku channel in Hollywood. I'm David Daniel. And time now is 527 and 74 degrees for now. There is some good economic news capping off a rough week. How the chairman of the Federal Reserve says new changes in interest rates are affecting home prices and inflation overall. And who doesn't need a mimosa in the morning? <laughs> hmm, I'll tell you about a new device that lets you make your own. Ahead on GMSA at 6, San Antonio Missions could soon have new owners, but does that mean a new stadium downtown? We'll tell you what we have found out so far later this morning. Hey, there's some good economic news this morning, capping off a rough week, but brand new jobs reports expected to show when it's released later this morning. And taking a look outside with live cam, starting very humid out there at 74 degrees. I could, you know, definitely feel that when I stepped out the door this morning. Yeah. And good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is November 4th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday. Group question. Yes. Group question. Who got sprinkles this morning? I did not. It was actually dry for me. You did? Yeah, I thought it was a joke for a second because it was a literally joke. like a <laughs> like a five second downpour on on 281 coming southbound. Did you see? No, I, I had a couple because I was driving. I was like, is that a little bit of sprinkles there? And all of a sudden the wipers went, and that was it. That was the extent of it. We so, can actually envision you in your car making that face. I, I really can't. <laughs> <laughs> just I was talking over. the widget. No, I can't. <laughs> well, no, seriously, because you go go past the street lights. It's like, yeah, there's a couple of sprinkles there. So that's what you're going to be running into uh, this morning around the area, and uh, it's going to be very you know, not much to really uh, write home about. Very few and far between, as is the situation right now. Like Steph mentioned, boy, the one thing you are going to notice: it's warm and humid. Overall, we are around the area 15 to 20 degrees above normal. Normal low temperature this time of year is mid 50s. So yeah, do the math. 75 degrees. That's closer to the what the normal high temperature is. 69 is the dew point. You get above 60 with that number and you definitely feel the humidity and we're way up there. Winds are out of the south primarily 11 miles per hour. So as you can see in this picture, we don't have any fog to deal with because we've got a decent breeze out there this morning. Here's some of these uh, light little spring. As you can see, a couple of that have moved through the uh, Canyon Lake area, one or two of them right around Bernie. Those seem to have sort of fizzled on out. A couple more off to the east. Here's this little, and these are called kind of streamer showers because the humidity is just getting pumped on in here, and it's like the atmosphere sort of fills up, and so you get these light little sprinkly showers moving on through, and that's going to be the situation this morning. So we've got some, if you're going down at 37, you're going to run into a couple of those in and around Flores. Uh, Gonzalez, a few of them. They're right around Luling and further up to the north. 73 in Holotus, 72 Comfort, as well as Balverde, and 75 right now in New Braunfels out there at the airport, as well as at Stinson. Very, very warm. Anything but November kind of weather. Mold is on the moderate side. Throughout the rest of today, we'll keep a couple of these little sprinkly showers around this morning. A few showers this afternoon, 78 at noon, 84 for a high temperature. Wind is going to be out of the southwest, picking up 15, 25 miles per hour. And then as the front moves through, dinner time and early evening is when the wind is going to be shifting around. Some of those storms will be on the strong to potentially severe side. We still have the, the threat for that storm prediction center, lesser chances out to the west and greater chances, especially northeast of our area. That's where the majority of this is going to be. The odds of rain are not that great around here later on this afternoon as the front moves through. But if anything does develop, 
it could quite easily become a strong to severe storm. Get that all sorted out, what to expect as the front moves on through and then this weekend as well. At least one day completely will feel like November. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, anything big out there, Stephen? Well, we still have those flashing lights along I-10, Mike, but let's get a quick look around town. There's 35 at New Braunfels. Not a lot of activity out there. Hey, great way to start the Friday as people are getting ready to drive off into the weekend, but let's get another look at 37 at Houston. A few more folks out there, but there at Southeast Military, it is a pretty much a ghost town. So a uh, perfect time to take advantage of some empty roadways, but as I mentioned, we still do have those flashing lights along I-10. Let's get you to our map and let you know where that's at because we're seeing uh, that being reported in the eastbound lanes. According to TxDOT, not far from Hildebrand, the West Avenue camera is picking up those flashing lights. So just remember to drive carefully if you are traveling into the downtown area. There, uh, Those first responders are still out there, so they could be on the highway inspecting or investigating the scene out there. We want to make sure we give them plenty of room to get the job done. And as always, we hope everyone is doing okay. Wide look at the map. Not a lot else to show you out there. Just some quiet roadways, but just always drive with caution. Even though there aren't really that many people out there, the commute will pick up in the next few minutes or so. Uh, but doesn't look like we're seeing any delays, at least just yet. If you're planning on traveling into the downtown Alamo City area, that journey from Bernie, I-10 eastbound, still 24 minutes at this point. 28 minutes, no need to hurry, coming in from Bolverde on 281 southbound, and not too awful, coming in from New Braunfels on I-35 southbound. So 25 minutes is what you can expect. Uh, but back here on Trans Guide, the commute has been shaping up to look uh, pretty quiet so far. We're going to continue to watch the roads closely, and as always, just make sure you do the same. Steph? Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, the relationship between two people seems to have hit more than just a rough patch. San Antonio police say one of them hit the ground after either jumping or being pushed from a moving vehicle, and they believe it happened during an argument. Katrina Weber is live near Loop 410 and Bandera Road where they found that man. Katrina, what is the latest on him? Well, police tell us the man who's in his 30s or 40s is in the hospital, most likely with injuries to both of his legs. Uh, they say that man was not cooperating very much with officers, but police were able to determine that both of his legs were either run, were run over by the pickup after he either jumped from it or was pushed. They found that man after 1030 last night here near Loop 410 in Bandera. The driver who apparently ran over him was already gone from the scene. And while police say that that man uh, wasn't giving them a whole lot of information, they believe that the two did know each other and they were involved in some sort of a dispute when, again, that man either jumped out of the truck or was pushed out of it. And police are still investigating. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Finally, some good economic news, hopefully. The U.S. Jobs Report comes out later this morning. And as CNN's Amy Kiley tells us, economists expect it to show growth. Today's jobs report caps off a rough week for finances. The Federal Reserve voted to raise interest rates by three quarters of a point yesterday. That was expected. So here's the real news. We still have some ways to go. Fed Chair Jerome Powell says data. more hikes are needed to reach the target of 2% inflation. Incoming data since our last meeting suggests that the ultimate level of interest rates will be higher than previously expected. The Fed might not be content with how its rate hikes are slowing inflation, but they're starting to affect one industry in particular, real estate. In my career, I've never seen such a strong change in a market from the first half of the year to the second half of the year. Between the Fed and high demand, mortgage rates have more than doubled this year. They hit a two-decade high a couple weeks ago before ticking down slightly last week. Many buyers right now are readjusting their expectations about what they're able to afford. High rates also affect credit cards, and it looks like more shoppers will rely on those this holiday season. The National Retail Federation predicts sales will be up 6 to 8 percent over last year. Some economic analysts hope a season of financial pain will result in a happier new year. While everyone will feel higher borrowing costs, they're also already feeling the effects of too high inflation. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. North Korea's latest launch of its most powerful intercontinental ballistic missile apparently has failed. According to South Korea's government, the ICBM failed yesterday during the separation of its second stage rocket and fell into the Sea of Japan. South Korean officials suspect it was North Korea's most advanced ICBM, 
which did have a successful test back in March. Theoretically, the missile could put the U.S. mainland in range of a North Korean nuclear warhead, but there are many unknowns about its true capabilities. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin condemned North Korea for being, quote, irresponsible and reckless, end quote. And there's a renewed push for a Cherokee Nation representation in Congress. The House Rules Committee is set to hold a hearing this month about a seating a Cherokee Nation delegate. The tribal nation is calling on lawmakers to honor a treaty the U.S. made nearly 200 years ago. They say a treaty from 1835 stipulates one of their delegates would sit in the House of Representatives. The Cherokee nominated Kimberly Teehee in 2019 to be their first delegate in Congress. If seated, she would be a non-voting member that could serve on committees, introduce bills, and offer amendments. Lighter mornings and darker evenings are on the way. Daylight saving time comes to an end this weekend. At 2 a.m. Sunday, clocks will turn back one hour and revert to standard time. It comes as lawmakers can continue to debate whether the longstanding tradition should be eliminated. The Senate approved the Bipartisan Sunshine Protection Act back in March, which would make daylight saving time permanent, but the bill has stalled in the U.S. House of Representatives. Time now, 540 and 74 degrees for now. Bad news for Lyft drivers, why the company says it's expecting to lay off around 700 employees. And let's look out there with a live cam. If you're not prepared for the humidity, you should prepare now when you step out that door. We're at 74 degrees this morning. Looking forward to a nice weekend, though. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 543 in your morning consumer headlines. Despite high inflation, it doesn't look like families are skimping out on gifts this year. The National Retail Federation predicts sales for the November and December shopping months will be between $942 billion and $960 billion. That is an increase of 6 to 8 percent compared to last year. Holiday sales have already gotten the boost ahead of schedule, and that's because many retailers kicked off the season earlier than usual. Lyft says it will lay off 13 percent of its staff or nearly 700 employees. In a memo to staffers, Lyft's co-founders said the layoffs will impact every part of the company. They said they're facing a probable recession next year and rideshare insurance costs are going up. They said they worked hard to bring costs down last summer by slowing then freezing hiring. Lyft's chief rival Uber, however, bucked the trend by reporting strong revenue growth fueled by demand for rides and, more importantly, meal deliveries. So if you're stuck at home and in the mood for a morning pick-me-up, Tropicana has come up with an idea that can help. So it's a device to create your own mimosa. The Tropicana Mimosa Maker is basically a spray bottle that spritzes your preferred amount of juice into your champagne. The device has several settings as whisper, spritz, and shower. Tropicana is only selling a limited amount but says the Mimosa Maker would be a perfect gift for the holidays. 545, 74 degrees. Let's look outside with Trans Guy looking over at Loop 410 at Starcrest. Things are moving there. And we're going to check back with our Stephen Cavazos very soon. Time check is 547. Flashing lights still out there at along I-10 at West Avenue. Let's get a closer look from Transguide. Uh, does look like we are actually seeing some progress out there. Tow truck actually on the scene, but a lot of flashing lights out there and traffic is already moving through those eastbound lanes uh, at a pretty normal rate. So just make sure to watch out if you have to travel in this direction, if you're heading downtown perhaps. Uh, but let's get you to the map because our, we originally picked it up near Hildebrand Avenue, but it looks like that could be closer to West Avenue. What uh, I'm seeing from TxDOT. Thankfully, there's no other issues to report as we give you that bird's eye view of the metro area. But let's talk about what you will be seeing here along Loop 410 tomorrow. We have some actual safety rail work that will be taking place on Saturday, November 5th. That should be wrapping on Saturday, November 19th. It will take place during the day, 9 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. So just make sure to watch out for those crews out there working to improve the roadways. Expect to see single main lane closures from Marbach Road to State Highway 151. But you know where to find that information ksat.com slash traffic but right now I would say this is the big headline of the roadways right now i-10 at west avenue so just watch out if you're traveling into the downtown area thank you steven we yeah sure well and uh, we should prepare uh for some rain some people yes. at least yeah with a little bit of rain around right now uh throughout the day there are just going to be a couple of those light little showers called them streamer showers because all this moisture is just getting pumped on in here from the uh, the gulf of mexico and then tonight as the front moves through 
late this afternoon, dinner time, early evening. That's when there will be a few uh, showers, thunderstorms, maybe a couple of stronger ones. The better chance for that, though, is going to be further up to the north and east. Talk more about that in a second. First of all, here's what's uh, going on. Actually, coverage is picking up ever so uh, so slightly there to the cut the area in half east of 35, east of 37. And we've got a couple of decent showers mixed on in. You see those little spots of yellow on there. And then further up to the north, right around uh, Gonzales, Luling, a couple of more of those showers going across I-10. You'll run into a few spots there, even in and around. Seguin, we've got a couple of these showers. You saw a few of them move through uh, Floresville and then going further up to the north and east. We got a, again a few of those showers out there. Not really anything to write home about. We had a couple of them in and around town and actually there may be a little bit of mist out there that's too light to be picked up on radar. There were a few earlier this morning as you can see right there around Bernie within the past hour, but that's pretty much it. We had a couple of them going up uh, 281 as well, so not a heck of a lot in the way of rain and this is going to be the situation later on today. These little light streamer showers that really don't amount to too awfully much. Just enough to make the roads kind of damp. Everybody, well, with the exception of uh, Lost Maples, but everybody's into the 70s, 15, 20 degrees above normal, and most all of the dew point temperatures around the metropolitan area, with the exception of the uh, hill country, are well up into the 70s. So yes, it is definitely humid when you look at that chart out there. We've got a decent breeze out of the southeast, uh, 10, 15 miles per hour. And even some gusts, 20 there in Kerrville, 28 in Lost Maples, and 17 at Stinson. This is why we're not seeing the widespread fog, because we do have a decent breeze out there. All right, here's what's going on. So throughout the day, temperatures will make it up into the mid-80s, and we'll have a couple of those light little streamer showers. Then, as the front works its way on through here, right there along 35, Dinner time early evening is when some of those storms are going to be developing and then working their way across 35 into the early evening hours. A few of them there in East Bear County and then continuing off to the northeast. This is a little more aggressive of a computer model as far as having some of those storms down to the south. But once again, we're going to be on the tail end of things in San Antonio and south of I-10, the majority of those being up to the north. Different computer model just to compare this one right around dinner time has a couple of these showers developing, but it really doesn't get anything developing until it's well east of 35 and in the eastern portion of our viewing area. Best thing to take away from this is the fact that odds of rain or chances of rain here in town are not that great, but if anything does develop, it could turn severe. The majority of everything, though, is going to be east of 35, and that's going to be into the uh, early and mid evening hours. 78 degrees today at noon, a couple of showers out there, and then a few showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms developing late this afternoon. As the front works its way on through dinner time, early evening, that slight better chance for a few of those showers and thunderstorms. And again, the better opportunity, the best opportunity, better chance to see anything strong to severe is going to be further up to the north and to the northeast. Now, as the front moves through, it's going to get windy in behind. Any of the thunderstorms have strong winds and a little bit of hail, maybe an isolated tornado, but again, further off to the northeast. Windy conditions then later on tonight, northeasterly, northwesterly wind, pardon me, and that's going to pull in drier air. Beautiful tomorrow. Starts off nice Sunday after you set your clocks back mm -hmm. and uh, then the humidity comes back in here pretty quickly in the afternoon Sunday and pretty warm and humid next week. You were smiling as you said that Mike getting that hour back. Yes. And thank mm. you for the nice graphic there. The reminder. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. It, it, I don't have to be reminded about that one. <laughs> well, again, as I always say, my mom says back to God's time. That's so yes. 553 74 degrees. The force is strong with the expanded edition of Lego Star Wars. We're going to get a first look at the new game next. The galaxy far, far away gets bricker, or rather bigger, in LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga Galactic Edition. Most impressive. The game collects the LEGO recreations of the nine movies in the Skywalker Saga into a single experience, along with 13 playable character packs for even more LEGO minifigures to play as. 
As various streaming series continue to expand the Star Wars galaxy, so does the game, with expansion packs planned for release later in November, bringing characters from Star Wars Rebels, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Andor, and The Book of Boba Fett to the game. LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga Galactic Edition is available now for current and next-gen game systems as well as PC. Goodness gracious me, this is not the pod you're looking for. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 557, ahead in the next hour of GMSA, the victim of car theft is warning other Hyundai and Kia owners to keep, up, uh, keep an eye out for trouble due to a TikTok challenge. We'll hear from her in just moments. Plus, if you're looking to shop on a budget during the holidays, there are a few things you can do right now to score the best Black Friday deals. And the Astros coming back home with momentum after taking the lead in this year's World Series. What they need to do to win it all this weekend. Checking Trans Guide right now. Flashing lights still showing up at their 10 in West Avenue. Steve's, Stephen's had his eye on this now for the entire hour. We'll get another look at traffic and any other trouble spots coming up. with an exclamation. Instead of fly ball to left, it sends Schwarber back onto the track at the wall. Payne has done it again. This morning, the Astros are one win away from baseball's ultimate prize. We're going to have the highlights and we're going to hear from rookie sensation Jeremy Pena coming up. Plus, a man in the hospital this morning after being hit by a truck. We'll look at what happened in just moments. And taking a look outside with live cam, humid for now, but hoping for some helpful rain in the future. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Friday, November 4th. Happy Friday. Rise and shine. Get that extra cup of coffee, but maybe a cold coffee because it's kind of humid out there. <laughs> it's very humid. 74 degrees. Mike Ostrage is here with the latest <coughs> on that potential Excuse for me. a shower or storm. And you said you're more worried about what does pop up going strong to severe. Yeah, the odds of rain tonight are not that great. You know, we got a couple of showers around here, but anything that does pop, Yes, can, because the atmosphere is fairly volatile. We look at all these different numbers, but that's going to be dinner time, early evening, and the majority of that is going to be further up to the northeast. That's where the greatest threat does exist. Right now, a fairly tranquil morning. It looks like the road is a little bit of sheen there at 410. We've had just a few little light sprinkly showers move on through here. We call them streamer showers. It's just all that moisture getting pumped on in here from the, the Gulf of Mexico. Coverage, especially to the east of 37, and 35 is becoming better as time rolls on here in uh, Carnes County and Wilson County moving through Floresville. All these are sliding up to the north. Gonzalez, you're seeing a few of them right around Luling and a decent shower here and there. Mark said he was driving into work this morning and it lasted about 10 seconds. Decent shower and that was it. I had a couple of sprinkles on the windshield and that was pretty much it as well. So there may be some mist out there that's too light to be picked up on radar. These showers continue to work their way up to the north, sliding across uh, 10 and again more off to the uh, east. Further off to the northwest, we've had a couple of these showers up around Canyon Lake. Those have kind of fizzled on out. The ones around Bernie have kind of fizzled out as well. But there will be one or two of them around throughout the rest of the morning and this afternoon. Now, with all the humidity out there, one thing we're not dealing with is the fog like we had the past couple of mornings because we've got a decent breeze, uh, 13 mile per hour winds at the airport, 16 Kerrville, and we've already seen some gusts 20 to 25, and it is going to be breezy throughout the day. 75 degrees here in town. The normal average low temperature is... 15, 20 degrees lower than that. Mid 50s here in town. So everybody is 15 to 20 degrees below, excuse me, above normal. And we've got a ton of humidity out there. So the allergens, mold is on the moderate side. Throughout the rest of today, we are going to be seeing temperatures that going to hold steady this morning like the past couple of mornings thanks to the cloud cover thanks to all the humidity a few of those sprinkly showers will make it to the upper 70s today at noon topping off in the mid 80s warm and humid 10 above normal and then a couple of those thunderstorms going to be developing late this afternoon dinner time into the early evening hours there is the threat some of those could be strong to severe high winds biggest threat hail Isolated tornado can't be ruled out, but that's especially going to be up here to the north and east. Just a couple of them. Like we said, rain chances aren't that great. If something does pop, 
could be strong. We'll take a look at the uh, football forecast tonight as well as the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? Well, uh, Mike, this has been the headline of the roadways right now. I 10 there at West Avenue. Let's get a wider look trans guide show you exactly what is taking place out there. You see several flashing lights. It's actually first responders working to clear a crash scene, and that's been there at least since the show started around 5 a.m. So just make sure to watch out because uh, we do have several of the first responders still out there on the scene now. This actually may look like progress, though, because we did see a tow truck that was already out there, and it does look like that car may have already been towed off from the scene. But, you know, we hope everyone's doing OK, because this has been lasting quite a while. If you are traveling in the eastbound lanes of I-10 to the downtown area, just make sure to watch out. First responders obviously are investigating, so we want to make sure we give them plenty of room. But good thing is, although we are seeing traffic build up in those eastbound lanes are uh, from the trans guide shot, we're not seeing a slowdown just yet. So good news out there. But 6 a.m. This is the hour where it really does start to pick up out on the roadways. Uh, you can see right now, though, still pretty quiet. And if your travels are going to take you right into the downtown area from any of these communities, I'd say it's still pretty pleasant on Pleasant 1037 northbound. 28 minutes is what you can expect if you're coming in this early half an hour. It's the usual drive time on Highway 90. Just uh, uh, make sure to drive careful out there. 90 tends to get pretty busy within the next few minutes or so. And right now that arrival from Lytle, 16 minutes on I-35 northbound. But let's go ahead and get you on rotation here before we jump uh, over to Mark and Steph, because everywhere else it's been pretty quiet as you just saw in those camera shots. 37 at Houston there at Southeast Military. I would say a quiet start as we get the weekend rolling, but we'll watch the roads closely and have those updates right here throughout the morning. Mark. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, Leon Valley Police say a man's in the hospital after someone in a truck ran over his legs. It happened around 1030 last night in the area of Bandera and 410 on the northwest side. Police say a driver was having a fight with a passenger in the truck. SAPD says rather Leon Valley police say that passenger was either pushed or jumped out of the truck. That's when his legs were run over and the driver of the truck drove away from the scene. So far, police have not arrested anyone. Right now, San Antonio police need your help finding a woman with a medical condition who disappeared on Wednesday. The woman is 44 year old Vangie Love Vasquez. Detectives say she was last seen on Pecan Grove Boulevard near East South Cross. Police say Vasquez is 5'3 with straight brown shoulder length hair. If you know where police can find her, you're asked to call that number on your screen 210 207 7660. A series of therapy sessions and a 10 month timeline are now at the center of a lawsuit against the Spurs and former guard Josh Primo. During those private therapy sessions, Primo is accused of exposing himself to Dr. Hillary Cawthon uh, not just once, but nine times. Dr. Cawthon was employed by the Spurs as a sports psychologist. She says she first reported the incident to the Spurs in December of last year, then several more times in the following months. Her contract was not renewed in August. And just last week, Primo was dropped from the team. It took the Spurs 10 months to do the right thing. That's too long. My hope is that all who hear can learn from this. All this was unveiled in a press conference yesterday at Houston. The Spurs organization said they disagree with the details and the timeline that was presented on Thursday. And meanwhile, Primo's attorney also responded with a statement saying the athlete never intentionally exposed himself and was unaware that was happening. In a statement, they claimed, quote, that Dr. Cawthon never informed her patient of the purported exposure, end quote. Dr. Cawthon's attorney says he intends to file a criminal complaint against Primo and expects charges. We will update you as this story develops. Local victim of a vehicle theft is warning other Hyundai and Kia owners to be on the lookout for that online social media challenge that pushes thieves to steal cars. Ashley Santos says her car was taken for a few days, then trashed, damaged uh, after thieves took it for a joyride. The TikTok challenge reportedly takes advantage of the vehicle's flawed ignition system, makes them pretty easy to steal without a key. San Antonio police say they're aware of the social media challenge. The owner of a car repair company says vehicle owners are left with hundreds of top if not thousands in damages, but that is not the only big problem. The biggest thing right now in the automotive industry is that parts are not readily available. So if, if you know, you get subjected to that, you may not be able to get your car back right away because you've got to have a, a, a part that may or may not be available. He and police uh, urge people to park in well-lit areas and secure lots. Also invest in a alarm or even a steering wheel lock. One of those locks can be bought for less than 40 bucks.
A confrontation between San Antonio Council members leads to a new vote. Next week, San Antonio City Council will vote on whether to censure District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo. According to an agenda memo, Bravo, quote, aggressively approached and berated a fellow City Council member, end quote. As we have reported, this confrontation involved District 7 Councilwoman Ana Sandoval ahead of a budget vote back in September. The two previously dated. Independent investigation found that Bravo's actions violated city administrative directives, specifically ones covering equal employment opportunity, anti-harassment, and violence in the workplace. The mayor had previously suspended Bravo from his committee assignments. Both Bravo's and Sandoval's offices declined to comment for this story. Looking ahead, today is the last day of early voting. Election day falls on Tuesday the 8th. If you have any questions regarding the election, such as where to vote, you can scan the QR code on your screen right now. Our election page will come up with everything you need to know ahead of next week. And full coverage coming up right here on KSAT and KSAT.com. Right now, 609, 74 degrees. And still to come on GMSA, Netflix is rolling out a new plan where you can watch with ads. We're gonna look at how much it could cost you. And the Astros headed home with all the momentum after winning twice on the road in Philadelphia. After the break, what they need to do to win it all this weekend. And Mike says we're expecting a nice weekend, but taking a look outside with live cam for now, we're going to have to get through the humidity and some rain for some people later on. We'll be right back.